Hello everybody, this is Grandmaster Jacek Stopa from Poland and um, welcome to my course on the King's Indian Attack. From the white side, we will be discussing um, a variety of aspects of this opening. Uh, we'll go over a few practical games um, from all levels, mostly top players. Um, we'll consider all sorts of move order tricks. Um, you know, we'll discuss the reasons why this opening could be a good weapon. For just about any player, this is mostly targeted towards the, um, uh, uh, the club players, club level players, maybe 1400 to around 1900. But it doesn't mean that even players of higher caliber, uh, you know, would not find this course useful. Um, and we will also go in detail about some of the theoretical considerations with the latest trends and some of my own recommendations. Um, so first of all, what is meant by the King's Indian attack? Um, so basically this is about the setup where white goes on knight of three, later d3, bishop g2 castles and d3. Okay. This is the, the main um, framework. And of course, you can imagine this, you know, getting there um, from a variety of move orders, really. G3 is, um, you know, also a pretty common choice. Um, it's all about flexibility and um, what particular positions or openings you want to target, um, as well as um, an extra consideration sometimes. You may be an expert in some opening from the black side and you may want to get the same exact position with reversed colors uh, playing white. Okay, so here it uh, would be the King's Indian defense. And actually, we'll be taking a look at one of my games that I played recently um, in Seattle, Washington, where I got a chance to get a position like this. Let me just quickly skim over there. This is not the exact move order, but uh, we'll be discussing these considerations later. So this is um, a position that I got personally. Um, e4 actually, that option. And I got a dream scenario um, of a particular position that um, black gets in the king's indian i'll show you guys in a bit so this is the position is the reversed king's indian defense with this idea of targeting this d5 pawn okay so we'll see you know how this goes with reversed colors in just a second for now we'll just consider um you know, black doesn't exactly played very accurately here. And this position basically is a huge advantage for white. Um, let's say knight c7. This is the game I, I played and I won this smoothly. I, I did end up making a mistake in a little bit here. Um, I won it anyway. Um, but yeah, this objectively, the position is just really, really good. Why? Well, because of this progression, um, if white just goes carefully here, he will most likely just, you know, bring this pawn all the way to promotion, supported by the bishop on the down, on the long diagonal. And, um, you know, the difference in the piece setup is also humongous. So, um, yeah, so this basically goes white's way very fast um and like i said um so let's just you know keep in mind yeah this basically set up black setup in the king's indian defense and i'll show you guys from which exact variation that comes so this is the usual color okay in this position, there is a move bishop g4. Obviously, you know, e5 is just the regular King's Indian. Um, or c5, I guess, somebody could try to get some kind of a 
Benoni-like position. Uh, we'll dis discuss these issues with reversed colors also. Bishop g4, castles. This is an idea you often see. Bishop e3, knight c6. So this position, um, now I would advise against this move h3, but okay, you know, if you recall, uh, in this position with white having black setup, white, I played e4, right? And after this, okay, I got this really great setup. So in that position, black's problem was that, for instance, there was no h6, right? So here, you know, white gets this extra option. But even but this position is still better for black, even though white has this useful move. So you can imagine just how great, you know, this position plays from white side with reverse color, it's like I got in my game. So well, this is an extra consideration that we will keep in mind while um, playing out this opening that um, basically white can trick black into getting some position that he's familiar with from the black side, um, you know, just to kind of get a tempo up. A tempo is massive in most openings, especially if this tempo can be used wisely. And that is how we'll be looking at it um, here in this course. So we will be starting with knight f3. There will be some brief discussion every now and then about, you know, the benefits of starting with g3. Mostly it's, um, it's uh, let's say, g3 would, uh, will allow an extra opening. Okay, this is actually not so great, right? But let's say bishop g2, okay. Yeah, um, g3. Now, if c5 will actually be going into this reversed king's Indian, starting with the move knight f3, in this fashion, knight f3, g5, okay. This is something that we don't mind, actually, only just like we just discussed. I'll have a recommendation for reversed Zemish as well, and other move orders like the e7. But what we do not want to play is the modern, the reversed modern, okay. So this is, all right, this we're trying to avoid, okay, let's say whatever this like, okay. So, you know, this also playable normal position, and I would even maybe have a recommendation, knight c3, but uh, I prefer the move order with knight f3 on move one. And in the case that black really badly tries to get this modern, now we'll obviously play d4, not allowing this. And we'll play this position that is, um, well, I mean, there's players who like this for black, but um, I will argue that this is just favors white greatly um, because of the awkwardness of this knight here. So, so this is another another consideration. Um, our main focus will be this uh, Slav setup with d5. So um, here we'll go into the um, Indian attack with d3 as discussed, and this is what I believe is the best setup for black. This is what I want to do with black. I believe in the setup strongly, but it doesn't mean that white doesn't have um, any good tries there. As a matter of fact, there is quite many, and um, you know, it's it's just mostly about these practical considerations everywhere. And um, well, that, with that in mind, we'll try to find something that is practically good, as opposed to you know trying to refute something as that is not the case uh, in practical games these days. Um, H6, D3. This is the setup. Okay, you can imagine people going E6 here, but that would be completely confused, um, as that just locks the bishop for no reason. Um, maybe something like this can be considered if c4 and d4 are on the board, right? So let's say, in like a Catalan setup, this could be, but then the h6 move is just also confused, right? Because there's other more useful moves like bishop b7 or knight bd7. Um, you get this kind of a Slav or, or Meran or position. So here, black just go bishop f5.
and we'll take a look at this kind of a position. Um, so this is the idea that h6 basically wants to get the bishop out to h7, as in some cases black, you know, will believe that um, that this bishop plays out strongly. So you know the advantage would be that let's say if some cases like maybe black goes bishop b6, there are some opportunities for the trade or from e5. Okay, so. Um, so this is something that has to be kept in mind. It's a one option, but of course, I mean, you know, it's not like this setup is so terrible. There's advantages to that because um, oftentimes this becomes a closed position, in which case this is not so terrible. Plus, you know, this okay, this is still a very solid setup, and there's extra options like this actually a better move here. Um, so we have to be, you know, mindful of these kinds of exotic variants of um, of these well-known positions some threats of this sort but you know this knight there's some trade-off and this knight may also have some problems there so this is something to um, to always consider and we will be taking a look at these positions separately but just coming back to this main setup i'll just give you guys an example of the kind of position that White may get here. Um, bishop h7, queen e2. This is one interesting consideration. We'll take a look at um, just some sample game where black misplayed it, you know, first having gotten a good position, then made a move which looks relatively intuitive and yet turns out to um, to have some serious issues there. So a5, okay, from black side, this is very logical, trying to gain some space on the queen side. Um, and we have block it on time with the move a4. Um, black develops, okay, so sometimes there's options of knight b7, this knight has to come up somewhere. <clears throat> but then there's maybe problems with e5 and uh, some awkwardness of the other knight, although, you know, this e5 also comes with a benefit for black because it will make it easier for this bishop to get some um, exciting options. But knight a6, bishop ought to b2, so this is why it's great as strength. If you look at the objective valuation, this may be around 0, 0. Um, okay, some symbolic advantage, um, but yeah, this is essentially not much. But you know, there is uh, some slightly more slightly slightly more comfortable um, setup because of more space. Um, there is more central play possible, and a variety of plans. Uh, you know, connected with this long diagonal bishop from B2. Options of locking the position at convenience, sometimes capturing, although this more rarely. And when the knight is out here on a6, there's extra opportunities of placing our own knight on e5 to expand on the king side. Some possibilities like that. E, D, e. This is the not so great move actually here. I mark it as a mistake. Um, so we'll see in the theoretical section it is much more commendable for black to um, keep actual tension rather than um, you know make this position open there's some there's multiple problems with this with this setup rook fd1 so it's not immediately apparent actually uh, that white is so much better as blacks, you know, doesn't have any obvious weaknesses, um, but basically now the piece is connected with this move knight e5. This bishop now is not so great, okay, just nicely controlled here. And control of this file, bishop e5 and weaknesses here on c4 b6. Um, and this basically makes up for some serious edge for white, as we will see. Let's say queen c7. Queen removes itself from this um, fun position down the d file. 
shop e5. Same question. Okay. So basically, it turns out you know this queen has a has a an ordeal here to kind of find a comfortable setup. In the case of bishop d6, there is immediate material loss, so that's not something that can be recommended. So white just basically makes simple moves and it allows them to grab advantage. So their weaknesses basically come around the dark squares. Um, and the main reason here why this move de is bad is well, the white knight basically gets this <laughs> square c4 from which um, it only gets better for white, right? Because of this dark square control. So knight c4. We consider what happens if, let's say, if black sacks an exchange here. Uh, like I said, you know, we're following here a practical game here between two national masters from this year. So this was hanging. Materially, maybe not so bad yet, but we chase the knight away. Just the activity of the pieces um, and an exchange is an exchange after all. So, um, yeah, this is basically quite good. Now, there is no immediate execution of any material gain related to this. You guys can imagine this position would be completely winning. Uh, it's just piece for a point, right? But of course, oh, black will have the intermezzo, and this may be not so clear. Of course, still an advantage, but um, yeah, this is still a decent advantage. You know, this knight here is, is quite powerful. There's a, a pawn for an exchange. White will still have to try, and you know, maybe he, if he can get to the seventh rank and double up, um, yeah, this looks like a very promising advantage nonetheless. But, we just play simpler now, a nice maneuver with the intention of bringing the knight over here, which will just make all the white's pieces great. Or well, maybe except for this rook, but this is just a matter of a quick doubling or some kind of a rook lift. Um, and, you know, this just to give you a nice flavor of, of uh, some of the good positions that white may get, even though if you just immediately look at the engine evaluations, you know, earlier on it... Um, seems that black is doing really great okay so bishop c3 back to h7 and like i said knight e5 um we you know also quickly consider okay what happens here it looks like a good option and the question is if white is losing some material here but actually not really rook d2 bishop d3 and Rook b2 with attack. Well, that's just lost, right? So this is not possible. Yeah, I don't, I don't finish the game here, but okay. Suffice it to say, this is a huge advantage for White because of an exchange and great piece placement. Upcoming plan is Rook d2 and Rook a d1. Um, doubling up on the D file, and basically that's it. This is another option. And we'll be looking at this in more detail, like I said. And now also there is another popular setup, and that is the one with e6. So this basically black sets it up in like a Queen's Gambit style um, with this structure e6 d5 and this pawn chain. Um, and you can imagine going c4, this is an option uh, with this kind of a structure. But I 
will be recommending a version that um, goes into this kind of a position. So this is like a true King's Indian attack example uh, with this move e4. And we will see how this transitions into uh, a French defense setup with b3. So let's say e4, e6, and b3 with this kind of an option. Castles and c5. This is the same exact position that we just saw. We'll just go back to our move order there. Um, knight f3. Okay, e6. I used to play this with black color also um, from the French defense. And I believe objectively this is. Um, not so bad. Uh, there's some. There will be some practical issues because White will get to be the attacking side on the king. Okay, let's see. D3 castles, knight d2, and e4. Okay, and immediate e5. So we will see. You know, with the, there's a plan there for White that looks very dangerous. And actually, you know, to be fair, I just played a game against. Uh, a very strong grandmaster from Russia, Vladimir Belus, and I lost a uh, blitz game uh, with the black, but I guess it was more of a blunder. Um, let's see. Objectively, like I said, there is not so many issues there. Okay, so rook e1 with defending this e5 pawn. Queen c7. Okay, it seems like it's falling maybe, but okay, we need to uh, enough defense. And if black, you know, this seems like quite obvious choice for black here to go on the queen side. Um, that is related to the move b5. Um, white will basically be able to go on the king side, okay? Because that's how, you know, the position sort of favors white's play on the king side related to more space here. Just easy to progress and such great concentration of pieces. Um, and black the same thing on the queen side here with these four pawns, okay? Preparing these moves like c4, b4, bishop a6, okay? Maybe knight d4 in some cases. Um, so this is kind of an opposite uh, opposite side play, um, even though white is, you know, going here from the king's yeah, uh, perspective, from the, where the king is against the black king, but okay. Um, so yeah, that's why it may seem like, well, after especially this maneuver, knight to h2, looks like very dangerous, uh, uh, very dangerous setup um, for black to play this. Bishop f4, okay, just essentially all of the pieces are just, you know, focused on the king side and trying to deliver. Um, you can imagine some sacrifices there, you know, maybe if black plays h6, there's some bishop h6 possibilities um so you know this can obviously be a problem but we will see you know, a decent setup for black um and j just how the dynamics plays out i'll recommend a way to to kind of um uh, to play with white to get some good practical edge so yeah it's it's very useful to keep in mind that i'm not recommending a winning open by no means is the king's indian attack a winning opening obviously right that's not what chess is about um basically it is you know it is all about finding a practical setup and understanding it better than your opponent does and that is how you win in chess uh, i have many friends who you know believe um that you can basically just go heavy with the engine on a, on a position memorize a bunch of things there and uh, you know you, you end up let's say like quote unquote refuting an opening but you know that barely ever happens these days it takes a couple seconds for any good computer engine you know to deliver good evaluation um, but it's not like only you know that well your opponent also has an engine you can also analyze the position and you know come up with similar similar conclusions um, so, you know, that is why it's more about, um, it's more about just being practical, maybe trying your own ideas, sometimes, you know, playing position that is objectively equal or even slightly worse, but as long as you know the plans and ideas better, 
uh, then you should be in better shape than your opponent. Um, actually, I was listening to an interview with a great player from Russia, um, uh, Daniel Dubov. Okay, uh, he's a young grandmaster over 2700, definitely one of the stronger players of his generation. Um, and uh, I think he's also Magnus Carlsen's second, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously a great player. He was saying that I th uh, that um, he mostly tries the ideas on his own. You know, he tries to make his own ideas work, and only then does he activate the engine. I think he even gave some proportion that nine in ten will be wrong, but then one out of ten, you know, ideas will actually be very good and usable in practical games. So this is a mindset that you know, as an aspiring chess player. You need to you need to keep in mind um, this is a very useful way to approach the game and that is also the perspective from which i'll be recommending this opening this king's indian attack um, you know some variations that you just kind of check with the engine there's nothing you know there but okay uh, it's more about the principles the heuristics that we will be adding so that you get the full kind of a picture of why a certain positions could be playable um, so going back here, this is another option, like I said, knight f3, then we need to also consider the move d6, the move d6 with the idea of e5. Here the question is, should we go into g3? <coughs> Well, it is definitely possible, but we do give black the option of e5 and f5, okay? And actually, personally, I do not like this setup for white. Uh, maybe connect, okay, this move, I don't believe there is much here um, in this kind of position. Although, of course, some people may disagree with me. That is why, okay, I recommend the move e4 in this particular case, guarding against this move e5. And two things here. One is, of course, if you happen to play the king's Indian defense here with, g with g3, then by all means should you enter this variation. If you don't and you still want to play this position, there is options other than that. You can start with the move a4. It's a very interesting move. There's some Mamediarov game here um, from, I think, two years ago. So definitely commendable option. Very logical to expand on the king side, on the queen side, sorry. Um, you know, as you'll see sometimes in the in the perk, in the modern um, white basically doing something like this. Um, of course, it's a little bit different because there is e force there, you know. Um, but here there's the extra benefit of this bishop shooting the long diagonal. So if the pawn progresses a5, a6, you know, this really becomes a great effort. Or another option is knight c3. This is, if you like, the modern with white. This offers some further transitions, threatening the move e4. Let's say if black plays knight bd7, e4 is perk. All right, this normal position. So again, this is a matter of preference. Um, and I personally played the move knight c3 and combined it because black sometimes has this extra option of d5, now proving this knight a little bit awkward. But here also there is some positive sides to this kind of a setup. Plus note that black had to play d6 and only later d5. Okay, so we'll consider that also. And yet another thing to discuss um, is what happens if black starts with knight, knight f6. Okay, so this actually may be the most um, this is the most flexible setup, I would say, and we will be devoting some time into this as well. So again, this is just you know this one of the setups for black. What to do here again? We'll be able to play d4, 
but note that this time black also gets the move d5 and maybe i think recently in this setup black gets very good results so i will not be recommending this one but we'll take a look into a tricky line in this variation of knight e5 um, of course there is also Mechanism in the end our back from a different move order into our extra two options and finally last but not least the dutch and here i have a nice recommendation of d3 very very dangerous option for white um, as we will see i actually had a very bad game here with black black color um, and um, yeah i made some improvements there but this uh this is a very very good practical choice from the white side 